Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Pride of Nations, Vainglory of Empires, 1850 to 1920. My name is Gilmer. Uh, this was a let's play of the Russo-Japanese War. And honestly, I have decided to call this one a quit. Quits. And I've played this, I've played this uh, scenario, scenario before, and I've actually... I've tried to play this scenario before and I realize now why I never finished it there. I think there are some serious issues with this scenario and this is not a criticism of the game or anything like that. I think that there are certain things though that are going on that I just can't control. And, you know, I want a game that is, or a, a war within the game or whatever uh that is easier easy not easy to win but easy to play and winnable and i don't think this game is winnable and i think that whoever set up this scenario probably thought they had done a good job and it probably was a good job uh but certain things maybe have uh, twisted it around a little bit or made it a lot easier because as you can see the Russians are down here in my territory but they're not losing any cohesion and if I move this army out of this region just even one one region across or one region over it the uh, cohesion goes down to almost nothing and it's he uh, has a power of 400 and there's no way a an army of 400 can can uh, prevail against an army of 2977. This this army this army right here has already fought him, I do believe, and lost and lost very badly. And he was at 16 to 17 or 1800 or something like that. So I don't want to completely abandon pride of nations I, i've had several people not a huge amount but several people and i know some of you have this game and have never played it or you've seen it and you wonder whether you want to get it or not if i were you and and i hate really to do this but if i were you i would get it on sale if you can uh Ajad, and Matrix and Slytherin have sales, and the sale is usually around uh, some of the sales. I mean, they have sales without uh, throughout the year, but their really big sale is right around uh, November 25th or so, and it's kind of the holiday sale is what they call it, and it starts after Thanksgiving here in the U.S., which is usually, I think, the third or fourth uh, Thursday in the month of November, and then they have a holiday sale that runs from that date, the end of November through the first or second week of January, and that is the best time to buy games, especially some of these older games. You can probably pick up Pride of Nations and every one of the DLC at half the price or even less, maybe 40% of the price, and end up paying maybe you know $15 for something that I mean, you know, if you like it as much as me, and I've played Pride of Nations a lot, I really have, and so I've put a lot of hours into this game, and I really enjoy it, and one of the, and I've played the Grand Campaign several times, but I haven't played it all the way to the end, but I have played Germany, uh, well, Prussia, and then formed Germany with Prussia, and that's a little... It's a little wonky, but it's still fun to play. And as Germany, once once you become Germany, you can start doing a lot of um, colonizing, which is uh, mostly in Africa. And, you know, I know it's not politically correct to talk about the colonization of Africa that happened in the 1800s and the early 1900s, but it did happen. And so this game does play it we can play it and it, and so it's a very interesting uh mechanism to 
to uh, colonize Africa with the units that you have. I have also played the United States and played it up probably through almost the Civil War. In this grand scenario, it starts in 1850, 1850 and runs through 1920. And it's it's uh and with the USA you can colonize Africa as well, uh, certain places that you have spheres of influence. Spheres of influence, unless you turn it off in the settings, uh, dictate where you can colonize uh, historically. And it's very it's a very interesting dynamic. It's very, I would say it's fun. I mean I I, I know I'm saying. Oh, we're colonizing Africa and, and, you know, everything that goes along with it as quote unquote fun, but it's, it's a game. You're not actually doing it. And, you know, it did happen historically and it's something to learn history on. It's even the bad parts of history. You can learn on it. And it's just an interesting little mechanism to play the game. So what I want to do is I want to actually show you a little bit of the initial I just saved that didn't I let's uh, do a new game and I'm not going to play this game it, it starts in 1850 I'm not going to actually play this game that I'm starting right now I, I mean I will do a video of it but I'm also going to uh, you know if you guys want I mean it I know not a huge amount of people watch my videos, but we do have 10 to 15 people that pull up my videos fairly regularly. And look at that, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. And if you move your cursor up and down, the light goes up and down. Or is that an elevator? I'm not sure. A lighted elevator, but it goes up and down. But you have um, 10, or I have 10 nations I could start. I'm not going to play the I'm not going to play Great Britain or the United Kingdom. Well, Great Britain. Oh, well, it says United Kingdom. <laughs> you guys, I mean everybody in 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 the United Kingdom there's there've been so many changes over the decades that you know, if somebody gets it wrong, you shouldn't take it too personally. Um I understand what the United Kingdom is. I understand what Great Britain is. And I understand what the island of England is. And so if, you know, during the years that I get, if I get it wrong, it's not because of any, you know, slight or insult I'm trying to put on you. But anyway, I'm not going to play United Kingdom. I'm not going to play France, although that that is something that might be kind of fun because I've never played it before. And they do have a um, colonization type thing going on with North Africa. Then they got Prussia, later Germany, uh, Austria, the United States, Russia, Japan, Sardinia, Piedmont. And you can form Italy with this, uh, this nation. I've never played Sardinia, Piedmont. I don't know how, you know, which which uh, little nations or, or nation states can form Italy, but I'm sure I could figure it out. Uh, Ottoman Empire. And it says, uh, maintaining its current extent and by enriching it. He can achieve a three to one ratio in prestige points at any time against the, the country's second in prestige or by having, oh, this is, this is how you win. Uh, you win by getting three to one ratio against the, the nation in second place if you're in first place. And then, of course, the last one is Belgium. This nation was added with one of the beta patches and was not originally designed for direct play. But you have one of the strongest economies in Europe. But your country is very small and, but you, and you also have powerful neighbors. Um... Colonization is another way you win with uh, the Bel with Belgium. Uh, I'm not exactly sure exactly where all their spheres of influence is are, but I really like to um, just to show you what 
is going on with the game. I want to play either the United States, uh, Germany, or Prussia, or Piedmont, Sardinia. So whichever one y'all want to me to play next of those three, I'm willing to do that. So with uh, the United States, if you scroll in, the United States, the issues that it has on its plate in 1850 is that they have, um, we have some, uh, these right here, I believe are explorers or something along those lines. And then we, uh, these are Indians. We don't have control of Indians. We have to take states away from Indians. And the way that we do that is through um, economic development and also uh, through military conquest at times. And uh, it's kind of interesting. The thing about this game when you play the Grand Campaign is you're not going to see a lot of wars. There's not There are not going to be a bunch of wars. Now, uh, Prussia might have a lot more wars in the United States. Because Prussia does have to unite. And part of uniting Prussia is is actually... Let's uh, change this. No. 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 Uh, administrative theaters of operation. Current weather. Regions of your nation. No, I want colored regions. And the thing about my playthrough of this is that it's probably not going to be a video I do constantly. I think this is the one I want. Yeah, this is it. So the gray is Prussia. As you can see, it's kind of spread out a little bit. Uh, the green is Russia, which is huge even at this time. Uh, this beige tan type thing is Austria. Blue is France. Red is England. And I'm not sure what color... So the United States are, well, that's weird. Why is that different than that? But anyway, this is, this is the U.S. obviously. And then we, uh, the U.S. own these two and then California and this up here. But this other stuff is owned by actually the Indians and, um, Actually, I think these are also Indian-owned. But this is Indian-owned. This is Indian-owned. The uh, other beige or orange beige is Indian-owned. This is Indian-owned. So the challenge for the United States is to expand west, uh, build the railroad, take over the states, take over the regions or, or territories, and actually form them into states as quickly as possible. You get prestige for every time you create an actual state. Uh, you, we've already fought a war with uh, the uh, with Mexico. That was in 1845, I do believe. And so Texas down here is part of the United States, but this part of Texas is still owned by Indians. And also, I believe this is New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, California, I mean, Nevada, Colorado. I believe so. But anyway, so that's the challenge that the United States has. The challenge that Prussia has is that you can see all these different little States, not Switzerland, but Württemberg, uh, Baden, Bavaria, Saxony, 
Hessen Castle, uh, Hessen Darmstadt. Uh, that's part of Bavaria. It's split, but it is part of Bavaria. Uh, you have uh, Luxembourg. I don't think you can add, but then up here you have Hanover, uh, Hamburg. Uh, then you can also take some of this. You have spheres of influence or cores on some of this up here in the Denmark region. And um, I think I've named all of them. But you, you have to form... Looks like North Germany, no, North Germany has not formed yet. So anyway, what you have to do with Germany, or Prussia, is form Germany. And um, the same with Sardinia Piedmont. Piedmont. You have to um, get all these, Lombardia, Parma, Tuscan Tuscany, uh, the Papal States, the two Sicilies, and you have to form them into Italy, basically. I believe Corsica, or that, oh, that's part of Sardinia, Piedmont. I don't know if, that's part of France, so I don't think we could take that. But that's what you would do if you play Italy. So whatever you guys want me to do, that's fine. Um, all of these have interesting things. So we have Sardinia, Piedmont, which is Italy, basically. Prussia, which is Germany, or the United States, whichever ones you want to do. And um, these over here have more chances of having conflicts, especially uh, Germany, because Germany doesn't really get along with France very well in this time period. And also Austria, it gets a little bit jealous, I think, of Prussia as its form in Germany. So there's some conflict there. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, I wanted to make sure that I got back to Pride of Nations. Uh, this, if I play the um, Grand Campaign, it's going to be a long-term thing, and I'm not going to do videos every single day or even probably more than once a week. It's probably going to be once a week, at most twice a week. And um, But it'll kind of show you what's going on with Pride of Nations, especially with the Grand Campaign which is really the meat of the game is the grand campaign. And it's, um, it's a very interesting little game. I mean, there's so many things going on with this game. It was very ambitious. Um, it didn't quite hit the mark the way they wanted it to, but this game, when it first came out, I was a first, I, as soon as this was released, I bought it because they were showing pictures of this and it was so awesome looking at the, at the time and I think this came out in 2011 is when it came out I think I had said previously 2012 but 2011 and uh, we they were showing us pictures of everything going on and it's just to me gorgeous so let me know in the comments if I don't get any comments you know I'm, I'm, I'll let's put it this way I'll let the comments go until Monday evening no, Tuesday. We'll go with till Tuesday because Tuesday is when I won't record on Monday, but I will record on Tuesday. We'll go until Tuesday. And if, you know, whoever, whichever one gets the most votes or if one, if only one person votes and they say Germany or Prussia, then that's what I'll play. Whatever you guys want. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time.